This video is meant to give you a quick explanation of the chemiosmotic mechanism. Chemiosmosis refers to the last step in cellular respiration, when all the energy that has been transferred to electron carriers is harvested to create lots of ATP. Remember that from glycolysis to pyruvate oxidation to the citric acid cycle, which is also called the Krebs cycle, reactants, starting with glucose, were oxidized moving their electrons into NAD plus and FAD to make NADH and FADH2, the electron carriers. For each molecule of glucose broken down in cellular respiration, many electron carriers are formed. Two electron carriers are loaded in glycolysis. Two are loaded during pyruvate oxidation. and eight are loaded during the citric acid cycle. So 12 electron carriers arrive at the respiratory chain of the inner mitochondrial membrane for each glucose molecule oxidized. A few molecules of ATP were created along the way, four to be exact. However, the real purpose of those steps was to load electron carriers. The purpose of the respiratory chain then is to harness the energy in those electron carriers to create ATP, which happens in the last stage of cellular respiration. How does that happen? The key, the direct source of energy for ATP synthesis, is the creation of an electrochemical gradient of hydrogen ions. In cellular respiration, an electrochemical gradient is made across the inner membrane of the mitochondrion with a higher concentration of hydrogen ions in the intermembrane space compared to the matrix. Side note, a hydrogen ion is also called a proton because that's all that's left after a hydrogen atom loses its one and only electron. The proton gradient is created by harnessing the energy stored in all of those electron carriers. It is created by protein complexes in the respiratory chain. The electrons from the two types of carriers are donated to complexes in the chain. The high energy electrons are removed from NADH and FADH2 and passed down the line from one molecule to the next, each time moving to a complex that holds the electron a little tighter and with more affinity. Of course, the final electron acceptor, which holds the electrons the tightest, is oxygen which combines with electrons and hydrogen ions to form water. Some of the energy released during the electron transfers is used to pump hydrogen ions from the mitochondrial matrix into the intermembrane space. It takes energy to move the ions there because they are going against their concentration gradient. And that difference in concentration that is built with a higher concentration in the intermembrane space and a lower concentration in the matrix. The gradient itself is a source of massive potential energy. When that energy is released, it powers ATP synthase to create ATP from ADP and inorganic phosphate. Hydrogen ions pass through the proton channel portion of the ATP synthase molecule, down their concentration gradient into the matrix, releasing some of that potential energy to cause a conformational change in ATP synthase. The conformational change allows the enzyme to convert ADP and inorganic phosphate into ATP. The energy from those originally 12 loaded electron carriers created from a single molecule of glucose move enough hydrogen ions to build about 32 molecules of ATP. So where the first part of respiration was all about oxidizing glucose to load electron carriers, the purpose of the respiratory chain and chemiosmosis is to make lots of ATP.